The 1980s was all about big hair, big music, big movies, and big trends. Snacks and foods in the 80s were the same way. Well, minus the hair part. People still enjoyed items from previous decades, but there were some new things. This video will discuss some of the foods that helped shape the 80s. Some of these are still around, and some of them are long gone. There are very few kids who don't like pudding, but there is actually something better than plain pudding, frozen pudding. Companies had recipes on how you can make pudding pops way back in the 60s. However, it wasn't until 1979 when General Foods decided to give it a try themselves. They released Jell-O Pudding Pops, and thanks to a famous spokesman named Bill Cosby, they really took off in the 1980s. They came in chocolate, vanilla, and chocolate and vanilla swirl. These delicious popsicles remained popular until they were discontinued in the 1990s. Somehow, they just weren't making a profit off of these tasty treats. One of the 80s coolest snack bars was the Peanut Butter Bopper, which came out in 1985 by General Mills. Originally, they were available in fudge chip, honey crisp, peanut butter, and by 1986, they added fudge graham and cookie crunch to the lineup. The bars had a soft, creamy center made of real peanut butter that would melt in your mouth. The outside was where all the crunchy flavors were at. Within 90 days of their release, they captured 9% of the snack market. Sadly, these are no longer available in the grocery stores. If you were a cookie lover in the 80s, then there's a good chance you tried the Keebler Magic Middles. Kids everywhere seemed to have them in their lunch boxes. These were shortbread cookies with either fudge or peanut butter filling in the center. Despite their popularity, they were discontinued so they could use the equipment that manufactured them for another item. People have been wanting these to relaunch for years, and there's even a Facebook page that's dedicated to make it happen. However, these cookies are still missing in action. The 1980s saw a full-blown war going on with sodas. Coca-Cola is one of the most successful soda companies in the world. The brand is recognized almost all over the world, but in the 1980s, the company experimented with some new products. Coca-Cola already had a Diet Cola named Tab, which was popular, but in 1982 they came out with Diet Coke. This contained artificial sweeteners instead of sugar, and it took over the market by storm. A year later they came out with caffeine-free Diet Coke, and this was also highly successful. With the success of the Diet Cokes, they began to wonder if they could improve the original formula. Coca-Cola had been losing sales to diet drinks as well as other non-cola beverages. Pepsi was also coming on strong in the 80s with some brilliant advertising. Then came the blind taste test, which showed that the public preferred Pepsi over Coca-Cola. So Coke went to work and came out with a new formula, and they called it New Coke. It launched on April 23, 1985, and made big news. Initially, the sales were good, but then quickly sales went back down to the way they were, and the public demanded the classic formula be brought back. Manny said the new Coke tasted like Pepsi, and even Pepsi ran ads with people saying, I know why Coke did it now. On July 11, 1985, Coca-Cola executives announced the return of the original formula. The Netflix show Stranger Things, which takes place in the 80s, featured new Coke, and it brought it back for a little bit, but it has since faded away into soda history. Keeping with sodas, there were also a couple others worth mentioning. Hubba Bubba Bubblegum decided to get in on the soda game for a while, and then another soda came in on the action and did quite well. Jolt Cola came out with decent popularity. Most thought it tasted like an RC Cola, but it had much more caffeine. Eventually, the popularity of these two sodas faded, but occasionally you can still find a Jolt Cola. Soda companies were also trying their hand in the gum market, and they did fairly well for a while. Dr. Pepper might have been the most popular, but you could also find others like RC and 7-Up. Hershey Bar None was a chocolate bar that was released in California in 1986 and it went nationwide in 1987. The original formula was a cocoa wafer, chocolate filling, peanuts, and a milk chocolate coating. In 1992, the product was reformulated into two wafers with chocolate coating, peanuts, and caramel. It was discontinued in 1997 with little fanfare, but you can still find it sold in Mexico. 
Do you remember potato skins made by Keebler? They were released in the mid-80s and they were made from potato peels. Eventually, they added cheddar cheese and bacon, sour cream and chives, and barbecue by the later part of the 80s. These snacks by Keebler are long gone, but there are some similar ones made by a restaurant chain named TGIF. The 1980s saw some products that were completely different and fruit roll-ups were definitely one of those. They were made by Fruit Corners and can still be found in supermarkets today. But the company also had another product they introduced in 1986 called Fruit Wrinkles. These were pieces of wrinkled fruit that came in little packages. They sort of wrote in on the coattails of the popular California raisins that were all over the place in the mid-1980s. Kids everywhere were singing the song, wearing the shirts, and collecting the figures as well as various other types of merchandise. Were you a fan of Hostess Pudding Pies? These came in chocolate and vanilla and were quite popular for a while because they were so different. They have been discontinued by Hostess, but there are some other lesser known bakery brands that still make them. Bonkers was a popular candy that was introduced in the mid-1980s by Nabisco. If you remember the commercials, they featured people who would have giant fruit fall and bonk them on the head. They came in assorted fruit flavors as well as chocolate. They seemed sort of like a piece of gum, but it was actually a chewy piece of candy. The product is no longer sold, but there have been constant rumors of its comeback. In 1983, Cheetos released a new flavor of their popular snack. It was bacon flavored and it was released in the crunchy and the puffs. They are no longer on the market, but Chester does have bacon cheddar fries in case you get the craving. Nabisco seemed like they were always coming out with something new and in the 80s they had Swiss cheese crackers. These had holes like a real piece of Swiss cheese, but the flavor didn't quite match up with the cheese. They were still cheesy, crisp, and delicious though. They have been discontinued, but occasionally you'll see some other brands that have something similar. In 1984, PepsiCo introduced Slice, which was a soft drink made with real fruit juice. Well, a small percentage of fruit juice anyways. This sweet fizzy drink was a big success, but the product disappeared from the shelves in 2005. A company named New Slice Ventures LLC acquired the rights, so you may still see some of these in Canada and the US. In the mid-80s, Keebler came out with Tribbles, which was a little bite-sized cookies in a little package. They came in chocolate chip and mint chocolate and were often found in vending machines. By the turn of the 90s, they had completely disappeared. If you lived in the 80s, then I'm sure you couldn't escape the burger war that was going on. This war had been going on since the 50s when Burger King released their Whopper sandwich. But Wendy's came on strong with a line of commercials that used the slogan, Where's the Beef? McDonald's was still trying to crush out the competition. In 1984, they released the McDLT. It came in a unique styrofoam package that kept one side hot and the other side cool. The bottom bun had the meat on one side and the other side had the top bun, lettuce, tomato, cheese, pickles, and sauces. The consumer would then combine the two for a fresher taste. This burger became really popular, but McDonald's discontinued it in late 1990 because of the styrofoam packaging. The 80s also saw its share of cereals that were connected with movies or shows. Remember C-3PO's by Kellogg's? It was launched in 1984, about a year after the movie Return of the Jedi came out. Rainbow Bright had her own cereal and it was made by Ralston. Post Cereal created Smurfberry Crunch, which was a fruity red and blue cereal that came out in 1983. A few years later, Smurf Magic Berries made their debut with mini marshmallows. Even Nintendo got in on the cereal market in the late 80s with their 2-in-1 Super Mario Brothers and Zelda-themed cereal. Keeping on the topic of cereals, you may remember Dinky Donut Cereal, which was released in 1980 by Ralston Purina. The commercials featured kids in suits and business attire who acted like executives giving expert opinions on the cereal. In the early 80s, Kellogg's came out with banana frosted flakes which were sweet but it never quite caught on and it only lasted on the shelves for about three years. But the 80s did see some successful cereals released. General Mills introduced Cinnamon Toast Crunch in 1984 and America has been eating this crunchy cereal ever since. 
Not only did Topps make the bubble gum in your baseball cards or garbage pail kids cards, but they also made the gum that came in the little juice cartons. There was no kid in the 80s that could resist these. It came in different flavors like grape, orange, and apple. The flavor was incredible for about 30 seconds and then you would have to chow on more until you had the whole carton gone in about 2 minutes. It's possible that these little juice cartons can be found somewhere, but it's certainly not as popular with kids today as it was in the early 80s. Perhaps one of the greatest things in the 1980s was the Oreo Big Stuff. It was a humongous Oreo cookie that was about 10 times the size of a normal one. It was introduced in 1984 and it was sold in a box of 10. It was on the market for about 7 years before it was discontinued. Since that time, Oreo has always experimented with different cookies. Oreo, if you're listening, I think it might be time for a comeback on this big cookie. During the 80s, the McDLT wasn't the only experiment McDonald's had. In 1981, they released a McRib and it has been on and off the menus ever since. It's not actually a rib, but rather processed pork meat covered in barbecue sauce in a bun. People usually get excited when the sandwich returns. In 1983, McDonald's also released the Chicken McNuggets. These deep fried pieces of chicken have been on the menu ever since and almost every kid has eaten them at one time or another. It's certainly now a classic from the Golden Arches. Hot Pockets are a microwavable pastry with fillings such as ham and cheese or pepperoni pizza. But do you remember them hitting the frozen food aisle in 1983? They quickly became the snack food of choice for kids after school, college students, and overworked parents. Most people have probably tried one at some point, and there are many different flavors on the market today. Reese's Pieces were not new in the 1980s. The tiny peanut butter candy pieces made their debut in 1978, but it was the 80s when they really took off. More specifically, it was 1982 following the release of the movie E.T. by Steven Spielberg. Within weeks of its release, sales shot up by 65%. Legend has it that Mars was offered the opportunity with M&Ms to be featured in the film first, but they declined the offer. If that's true, I'm sure they were kicking themselves. Doritos were certainly not new in the 1980s. In fact, they have their roots in the 1960s. But in 1986, Cool Ranch Doritos were released to the public. This new flavor was completely different than anything else on the market. Even today, these tasty chips still have no problem selling. Giggles were cookies made by Nabisco and they were introduced in the 80s, but they were only sold for about a decade. These were shortbread cookies filled with fudge and vanilla cream. In a way, they were like Oreos, but Giggles had silly faces on them that would make you, well, giggle. The 1980s saw a lot of different food come and go throughout the decade and even after. But many of the different foods are here to stay, and they are just as popular now as they were back then. I hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane as we took a closer look at some of the foods from the 1980s. Thank you so much for watching.